and all the way across the line you've got orange little coals. You're good. Hey guys, so we're getting ready to do our first burn in this stove. And the first burn is important because it's curing the paint. Uh, it's gonna put off some nasty gas and smoke and stuff like that when it initially gets hot. It won't change the color of your paint at all, but it, it does have to cure. It's a special paint that's um, for high heat environments and you will need a chimney and you will need either pellets or very, very small kindling to get started. This, this is not what this stove is meant to burn. This is cordwood that is not kindling and this knot right here would not let it go down the feed tube. So John has decided to use pellets for this first burn and we're gonna let it go. I think it's a three hour burn that you're supposed to do just to make sure it's all the way burned off and cured. And the nice thing about this stove is that it's super light, easy to move. So we're just gonna take it outside, burn it in the driveway instead of having all those fumes in the house. And, um, and then we'll move back in. So rather than have this sucking warm house air for the days that we have not used this yet, I put a plastic bag over it and then I stuffed a rag inside of there just to just to kind of seal off uh, as much airflow as we could to keep the warm air and the how and the outside air separate. Do you want me to take that thing? Do you want to scoot it this way first so that you can crouch? Are we try side to side or what do we try? is in there and facing correctly. Okay, so that is like 20 minutes worth of burning. Yeah, those are the air intakes. So the tube itself, the air goes down. The tube is what holds the pellets. It's this square tube is not full of pellets. The tube inside, the circular tube, is full of pellets. That way, you still got air intake down the sides around the tube. All right, this spot. I don't know if you can see it. There's a darker spot in the middle of the cooktop part. That is where the mushroom is of the, the, the turbulent air that's um, going up the J-tube and down, that's where it's the hottest, is right there in the middle. And a lot of times you will, on a rocket stove, get a dark spot like that. Very normal. John's going to explain how he finally got it to draft. When you have a cold, short chimney, sometimes it's really tricky. Okay, with the short chimney, of course, it's going to be hard to light because it's hard to draft. We had to try with the flamethrower two or three times to get the pellets to come off and get working. But eventually it did kick off the third, third or fourth time we tried to start this. And it is now drafting plenty well, uh, drafting through our little 24 inch chimney. Uh, it is warming up and it is curing the paint so that we won't have the smell inside of the house later on. Uh, currently, currently it's good and hot. Down, clear, clear down at the bottom, I touched with the back of my fingers and I got a couple little first degree burns. If anybody sees that it's smoking from the top plate right now, it is because we don't have enough chimney on here. As soon as you get more negative pressure coming out of this chimney right here, which would be a full size chimney, I believe 16 feet is recommended from our other one. Uh, it's probably a good rule of thumb. It would be, and we are well above that with the chimney that this is going into. So we should have a really good draw when we finally get this installed. 
it's recommended that you have your traditional uh, air quality detectors in the room close to the stove that you have a an extinguisher a fire extinguisher and a bucket of sand a good bucket of sand because you can smother a fire by just pouring the sand into the burn tube and it won't hurt anything you don't want to put water if you have a fire you don't want to put water in here with how hot this thing gets you will have massive burns from that steam do not put water in it this is a 40 pound bag it costs six dollars and fifty cents This is what the bottom of the hopper looks like. This is the stop, the brake, the shutoff. This is not like a damper. It does not restrict airflow. It only is a fuel release or a fuel stop mechanism. The plastic bag stays on the air intake until we're ready to start the fire. The reason for that is that otherwise all the warm air in your house goes up the chimney. The draft on your chimney will just suck it right out of your house. So this in operation gets really hot. So once the stove is going, you want to make sure to have a hot pad holder or something else to touch this with. Another thing is that it can get stuck. Ah, there we go. Okay, you just have to do it exactly right and hold your mouth right. A little mini cookie sheet because it's metal, it's non-combustible, it's washable. I'm just going to clean out the batch box. Alright, so the purpose of the grate is to hold the pellets up off the bottom of the burn chamber so that they have oxygen running through them. If they're just sitting on the bottom of the burn chamber, then the oxygen isn't running through them, it's running over the top of them and it doesn't, it doesn't work. So, when you're lighting the stove, you're lighting across the grate. You're not lighting the ones that fall into the bottom. They'll burn up too but the, it's the grate itself that has to be lit. Also, when you use your blowtorch, it's from side to side slowly. I was afraid of these blowtorches, but it's really simple. You just turn it until you can hear the gas. See how easy that was? All right, so I'm just gonna go back and forth here back and forth, back and forth. And I'm gonna leave the camera going so you can actually see the amount of time it takes in real time for it to get started. So that when you try to light it the first time, you're not like, well, why is it taking so long? Everything I saw made it look like it just lit right up, but in reality, it, it takes a minute. And then once it is going, you have to let it burn for a little minute before you put in the door. Now, be aware, this stove gets really hot and you don't want to touch it after it's been going for a little bit. The door gets hot. About the only thing that doesn't get hot is the legs and the pellet hopper. The pellet hopper itself doesn't get hot because the negative pressure takes all the flame, all the heat, all the smoke up into the burn chamber and up through the chin chimney and it's sucking away from the hopper and so the hopper you don't have to worry about a fire going up through the pellets into the hopper none of that happens because of the way that the air flows in a rocket stove
you'll start to see the little tiny corners start to glow just a tiny bit. One of them will start to hold the flame a little bit longer. One of them will start to hold the flame a little bit longer. Honey, I'm in the middle of filming and your yelling is not helping. So eventually one or other of the little pellets will start to hold the flame. But you just keep going back and forth and back and forth because you want multiple spots to be lit, not just one little pellet. You're getting close. You see if I slow down for half a second, we start to get it holding. I could turn it up, but really what's the point? It takes the same amount of time to do it with a little fuel as it does to do with a lot of fuel because the pellets just have to warm up. Now, as long as this door is open, it won't start to rock it. It'll burn, but it won't rock it. If you lived in a house where you didn't want anybody to know that you were burning wood, this would be the ideal stove because with the pellets, it doesn't smell like anything. You don't see any smoke coming out of the top of the chimney. On a really, really, really cold day, you might see some white steam, a tiny bit of white steam coming out the top of the chimney, but that's water vapor. And so, um, if you wanted an incognito stove, this is a great, great option. Okay, you start to see the flame is starting to be sucked backwards. So instead of the fire staying here at the front and just going up, the flame is starting to be pulled towards the back of the burn chamber. Now that they're warm, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. And I think we're good to go. When you start to see like the, that everything's kind of getting sucked backwards. And all the way across the line, you've got orange little coals. You're good. All right, so I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer with the door open, just so it can breathe. But I've got blue flame there, no problem. So I actually think I'm okay just to shut it. And 
that's how simple it is. At this point, all I need to do is just stick around close by for a few minutes and make sure that it didn't indeed take off. But I mean, I can, here, I'll show you. See that? I can see just through the crack that it's still going. All right, that sound is not the fan. That sound is the rocket stove running on pellets. Okay, we're about five minutes in with the rocket stove. The basement is already, I'd say about 10 degrees warmer. The top is not yet really hot, it's just warm. But the good news is there's no smoke coming out of the side. We didn't have any back puffing, nothing bad going on with the stove. The fan is on now to move the air into the rest of the basement. So this is the first time that we have burned pellets in our house. First time we've used pellets. And so I'm having to also compare the operation of the stove to just general use with pellets. The pellets don't really smell like anything. They smell like a woodworking shop. They don't smell like um, pine, which is what our wood usually is, um, or fir. So you don't get any smell of smoke in the house. What you do get is the smell of hot stove. Rocket stoves get way hotter than regular conventional cooking and heating stoves. When you go outside of your house and you're burning with a rocket stove, you don't smell smoke. You smell heat. It's kind of different. It's kind of a tinny smell, kind of a metallic smell. And it's because it's so hot that it actually combusts all the gases inside the smoke so that there's no smoke going up. The chimney's still hot, but there's no smoke there's just a little bit of water vapor. So the smell experience is a little bit different. Um, as far as pellets go, again, I'm trying to make sure I'm comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. We've never burned pellets before. We've always done cordwood. So um, the pellets are, to my opinion, a little tiny bit messier and more finicky than cordwood in general, not in this stove because we haven't burned cordwood in this one yet. In general, the pellets, you have to make sure they stay super, super, super dry because they'll like mush and not burn if they get water on them. So storage is very, very important. Keep it up and away from water. You can't, have, you can't store it outside under a tarp. Um, it needs to be indoors in a safe place. So one bag of pellets, I, I, I don't know if it actually filled this all the way, but it was pretty close. And then this would burn all day. And the interesting thing about that is there's no damper way of not having it get so hot. You can like open up this. This is your, um, this is your stop. This is your stop on the hopper. And if you pull it out, it drops pellets down the tube. If you push it in, it stops any more pellets. So if you want to slow the fire down a little bit, you can open this, drop a bunch down, and then close it again. And that way, if, if it feels like the house is getting too warm, but you want the fire to keep going, you, you can play with it a little bit, but it's not like a dial. It's either on or it's off. Our next video is going to be about lighting the stove with cordwood and whether or not it comes off well. I don't know. We'll see if it lights as easy as the pellets do. Oh my gosh, Dad had just filled it. <laughs> okay, we have a dry bucket. If you're interested in learning more about the mass benches and about using cordwood in rocket mass heaters, make sure to go check out the links that I have in the description that go to permies.com. Permies.com has PDFs and videos and books and podcasts all about self-reliant living. And they are, uh, well, they're my original resource for learning about uh, these kinds of things. Uh, the book that I recommend for rocket mass heating information is the one by Erica and Ernie Wisner. That will also be in the description. And both are affiliate type codes that bring money back to our homestead so that we can do more projects. This Liberator stove has been really fun to play with, and I look forward to all the different ways we get to try to utilize it between cooking on it 
uh, using cordwood in it and then I'm hoping eventually again through the winter to find a way to add that bench onto the end so thanks for popping in make sure to go to the links if you want more information and want to support our homestead and we'll talk to you later